Hello, friend. You are welcome to yet another session with Code with us. Even following my video um, from the beginning of this learning of C programming language, I want to really appreciate you. Thank you very much for your commitment to the channel. If you get to like our channel, direct get to like any of our videos, get to subscribe to this channel, go ahead and click on the subscribe button. And if you love what you've been watching on this channel, please kindly click on like for our videos so that you could encourage us to discover this channel and to follow along with the videos. Thank you very much for your commitment. So we um, started our learning on C programming language. We've looked at introduction, we've looked at how to set a system for C programming, and then we started a discussion on the anatomy of the C programming, of the anatomy of C program. So if you were not part of the first part of this, of this teaching, of this present teaching, this present presentation, I would like you to please revert to the old video the older video in this playlist so that you could understand what we've spoken about so far. So we've looked at generally into how the program looks like. We wrote a program, Hello World, and then we try to look at the different parts of the programming language. So we started with the main function. After the main function, we looked at the preprocessor derivatives, and then we looked at the comments how to, we looked at how to write comments in C language. And then we started a discussion on tokens. So I, I said something that tokens are the building block of a C program. And if you misplace your tokens or you don't, you use the wrong token, you could produce a bug. And then most times, most times, especially me, when my code is not going well, is usually because I used the wrong token, or I did not even, I did not even, I just inappropriated the use of my token. So you need to be careful whatever you're typing. I said something in the last video that English language or any human language may pardon you for syntax errors, but computer language will not pardon you for syntax errors. So that is why you need to be careful. So today we continue. We are looking at operands and operators. Operands and operators. So what are operands and what are operators? So they are tokens involved in any operation in the C program. We are saying C program because we are discussing C programming language right now. But you would encounter operands and operators in every other language. Operands are the subjects or objects of any operation. So it's just like, you know, I'm going to try as much as possible to refer to English language because I believe if you are watching this video, you understand the English language. So you will know that in English, you have subject and object, and then you have a verb. So verbs are, verbs signify the action to be taken. And then your subject um, is the person doing the action. And then your object is to, it's whatsoever is going, the action will be done upon, right? So the same thing in programming. When you're writing the code, you are going to have your verb, and then you're going to have the, you can have the subject, and then you can have object. So in this situation, operands are your objects and your subject, and um, operators are the actions, they are the verbs. So let's, before we check the example, let's look into our code. You see, in this present code, there is really nothing yet, right? We don't have, we're not using operators or operands, but 
For example, if I say in A, we will discuss about data types, we will discuss about variables later in the program, equal to four. And then I can say A plus four. So this right here, A plus four. The A is being added to four. So you can see A and four, they are operands. And this plus is the operator. So in English, right? So this is the subject, this is the object, and this is the verb. So in programming language, you have verb, you have object. So the same thing, you can see the equal to, this equal to is an operator. So what this is saying is, assign for to the variable a so that this is the interpretation the interpretation of this in english is assign for to the variable a and that's it so how do i know it's assigning the equal to so in in programming the equal to sign this equal to sign the single equal to sign means to assign so in another video we're going to talk about operators and then we'll understand operators better and we will see they are uses in c language so just for what is what i want us to understand operators and operands so let's go back to our presentation so you can see that there are different types, right? There are different types of operators. There could be the unary operator, which requires a single operand. So these are examples. You will come across these examples later on. And then there is the binary operators, which requires two operands. For example, the addition, the assignment that we looked at just now. So the next thing is expressions and statements. Expressions and statements. So expressions are phrases in programming. You know, in English language, a phrase actually makes sense, right? But it's, a comp it's an incomplete sentence. So that is just how expressions are in programming. They are incomplete. Meaning that when you type an expression, it is incomplete your your uh, your compiler does not know what to do with it it understands that yes enter something it's not an error but your compiler is like but i can't do anything with that do you understand so they will not amount to anything in your output so let's give an example of that in our programming um in our in this source code, in this code, right? If I, the other time I did int a, okay? If I do int a equals to four, this is actually a complete set, a complete um, a statement because it's complete. So if I do a plus four, if I just do this, you see that this, actually works right this code this code is going to compile it compiles successfully but come on this a plus four is not amounting to anything it's just occupying space it doesn't doesn't make a complete sense but if i now say okay maybe i want to have another variable int b equals to a plus a plus four so now this is a complete statement. This is a complete statement, right? Because now what I'm saying is assign a plus four, that which a here being four, so that's four plus four, and then assign that to variable b. So that is what has happened in this code. So I can go ahead to print out. I can print, I can print them out, right? I can say a is 
don't worry we'll discuss how to print later in C we'll discuss this printer function and then I can say B is I want to end with a new line. So if I do this, our code works. We are saying A is 4, we are saying B is 8. So we could use this, but before, when I just had A plus 4, when I just had A plus 4, if I code this, if I so this is going to give us an error presently because I don't have B. So if I compile this, hello, so we still have A is 4, but A plus 4 it's not giving us anything. We are not assigning it to anything. So it's just an expression, but and then it has no meaning. So let's go back to our presentation. So another thing is every statement in C is terminated by the token semicolon. So if you don't end any of your statement with this semicolon, you are going to have a syntax error. So that's why this is very important. In fact, a lot of times when you're writing code in C and you're not used to this semicolon, you are going to, you will just have bugs. You will have bugs, but those bugs are actually very easy to fix because you're going to know, oh, I didn't put this semicolon. But sometimes it can be crazy when you're trying to go fast in writing your code. So just note that. So these are examples of statements. A equals to B plus C. You see, this is a complete statement. So a com another complete statement is when you just um when you just declare, you just declare a variable and you end up with a semicolon. It's also a statement. So what this means is later on in your program, you are going to assign a value to that integer. So Another thing that is worth noting here is that code blocks that are wrapped in curly braces will contain several statements. But however, at the end of that curly brace, you don't need to add the semicolon. So that's just something for you. An example is our main function in the program. You will see that this main function does not end it's not ended with a semicolon so because this in itself this curl braces wrap this statement so this is noted as an ending so just for us to understand that All right, data types, data types. C is a statically typed, C is statically typed, meaning that the data types of your values and your variables must be stated. That means they must be known before compilation. So you must know the data types, you must state the data types before you compile. So it's not going to be a thing of um, you are going to you don't know whether it's going to be a string you don't know whether it's going to be an integer you must know beforehand before you compile the code so whenever you the keyword of data types are integral part of the program and are used when declaring or defining variables or functions so for example in float double and so on so if you go back to our code you would see that we have 
in main void. Remember, I said main is a function. Main is a function, right? So you are seeing that when you're writing a function, which we'll still talk about later, the first part is the return type of your function, then the name of the function, then what we call arguments or parameters, right? Of that function. So the the return type here is the data type to be returned. And here too, when we are declaring this integer a and we are initializing it to four, if I come back here and I do something like um, let's do four point seven eight nine. Let's see if this is going to compile. So it compiled successfully, but let me see what will be the value of A. So you can see it's saying A is 4. But whereas what I entered was 4.78689. So the problem is I entered a floating value. Whenever you see a decimal value here, so it's um, either a float or a double, right? So depending on what you want to use. But if I come back here, let me make this a float. So if I make that a float, then I'll have to change this data type here to percent F. So if I recompile this, So you can now see now it's even giving me extra decimal points right filled with zeros so 4.789000 so that is to make us understand that <coughs> c is expecting a data type for every variable and when you don't include that data type or you miss that data type you introduce bugs into your program so you must know the data type the correct data type while you're writing your program before you compile it let's go back to our presentation so right here we've mentioned the type the data type the next thing is functions right we'll discuss about functions much later but functions are a key part of any program and programming language they are a defined block of code containing statements that have a specific purpose. So functions want to do something. Main is a function that calls other functions. So in our program, we saw that main, we saw main here. This is main, this is a function. And in that function, we called this function. So main was calling print f, which is also a function. So going back to our presentation, so we'll discuss more on functions later on. So if you are watching these videos for the very first time, I want to appreciate you for joining. We'll, stop, we'll be stopping here today. And then next week, we'll be, sorry, in the next video, which will be uploaded shortly, we will be looking at compilation the compilation process of the c program so we want to understand what happens when you compile a c program the different steps involved all right so thank you very much for joining me today. if you are yet to subscribe to this channel i would encourage you to please click on the subscribe button so that you have these videos you are notified immediately these videos are released and if you like what you are seeing if you like our coding session our learning sessions and you would like your friends to also benefit kindly share the link with them click the like button so that more people will be introduced to our channel thank you very much i'm very grateful to have you see you next time bye